Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll go through the uh, weather warnings we do have in force in in Scotland and then we'll have a look at the sort of mid-range forecast from the GFS, the GEM, the E7WF and the GFS ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Met Office run as well. It does look like in the medium to long term we're going to be staying with a bit of a high pressure theme however with the amplification in the jet stream, it does look like we're going to be ending up on the cold side of the high, which basically means our airflow is going to be coming in from the north. It doesn't mean it's going to be very, very bitterly cold by any means, as it is still October, but it could mean temperatures are a little bit chilly over the coming weeks. So do remember, if you've enjoyed my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and do remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So if you do have a look at the live radar, you can see at the moment we've got really quite heavy rain across western Scotland, parts of Ireland, Northern Ireland, and a few patches into northern and eastern Scotland and in northern England as well. We've got this conveyor belt of moisture as out in the Atlantic we do have X, um, X Hurricane Sam, which is now um, developed into a general low pressure system. However, it's got a lot of warm, moist air associated with it. It's being shifted up by southwesterly winds hitting the mountains of western Scotland, we're seeing a lot of relief rainfall, and that's why we're seeing this localised, very heavy rainfall. Um, 100 millimetres is possible over the next couple of days, and we do have weather warnings in force all the way till Saturday. Generally, though, it is pretty dry, um, quite a lot of sun, uh, sunny skies around, um, and it's pretty decent. Temperatures are getting to around sort of mid to high teens, and over the next couple of days we could be seeing temperatures potentially get to 20 degrees, because not only is this conveyor belt moisture bringing in hot, uh, sort of warm, humid um, air for rain, ahead of the weather front, we do still have generally warmer um, sort of mid-Atlantic air, which um, is going to mean temperatures will be able to respond decently. So if we do have a look at the yellow warnings, we still have three um, days of yellow warnings in force. This yellow warning from um, earlier today, from midnight all the way till 12 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, hasn't been changed yesterday, but if you haven't seen it already, I'll run through it briefly. Rain will spread from the west during Wednesday evening, so last night, becoming persistent and heavy at times. Um, 40 to 70 millimetres will build up quite likely with 100 to 150 millimetres locally over higher ground. There is some uncertainty um, to which areas will see the largest totals, but range should generally turn less heavy during Saturday. Again, high likelihood, low impact, and you can see by the live radar, um, it is moving in at, uh, as we speak, um, with a lot of rain totting up in some places. So if you now go through the mid-range forecast, if we do have a look at the GFS, you can see this conveyor belt of moisture. You've got X hurricane Sam out in the Atlantic. Warm air coming up from the southwest. You can see it here. Um, 10 degree ice firm moving up and it, under the high pressure we still have decently warm air and it's going to be temperatures going to respond pretty decent. Beyond that the high pressure does can take, uh, take over control and build in we get a good few dry days over the weekend. Before the high pressure sort of shifts out um, it's centred towards the Atlantic and this is what I mean by we're going to be on the cold side of the high. You can see on the western side of the high the 10 degree ice firm is pushing up however on the eastern side so for many parts of eastern England, eastern Scotland we're going to be pulling in some chillier air in from the north. Now this pattern kind of repeats itself. We see the high pressure topple. Another low tries to push back through. And then we do see again some more cooler air coming in from the north. Spreading through the whole country right towards the end of the run. And it just continually patterns with this amplified jet stream. It's more seen on the GEM and the Eastern North as, as I'll show you in a minute. A bit more amplified there. GFS is a bit more of a flatter pattern. But it still has a lot of amplification in colder and warmer sectors um, but generally many areas of the UK it's still under higher pressure so even though we're going to be seeing these colliding air masses generally at least for England and Wales it is looking pretty dry for Scotland of course closer to the centre of the lows always a higher chance of weather fronts and showers so if we do now see uh, what's going to be happening in the GM you can see again, warm conveyor belt there moving up at the moment, and then we see that northerly wind move through, a bit more of a widespread northerly there through early next week with some quite chilly conditions indeed. And then we see the pattern repeat itself again, not quite as cold, but by next Friday, another sort of brief northerly wind feeling pretty chilly. 
Um, and that high pressure sort of sticks around with this big amplification in the jet stream. You can see high pressure heading up towards um, northern Canada into Greenland, then dipping southwards, heading up northwards to Iceland again, and dipping southwards once again into Europe. Amplification is very interesting, seeing this happen at the moment. And if we did continue like this, as the air does cool down over the coming weeks and months, wouldn't be surprised if we head into December. We we're talking about these being more of sort of wintry blasts than chilly northerly winds, and we'll have to keep an eye on if the this pattern does sort of continue and is sort of a repetitive pattern over the coming months. So we do have a look at the east MWF, see how that does compare again. Conveyor belt of moisture heading up at the moment, and then that northerly wind moves in. Um, pretty chilly down the eastern side. However, for parts of Southern Ireland, it could still be pretty decent. Again, all depends on where these air masses sort of set up. And still being a good sort of four or five days away, there is still subject to change on exactly where these air masses do set up. But the general pattern does look pretty nailed on at the moment. Beyond that, again, we do see a, another sort of northerly wind move in. And still this big amplification in the jet stream. Something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Very similar to the GM with this low out in the mid-Atlantic. Um, with a lot of amplification. And again, very interesting to see this early on. Uh, or mid, sort of middle of the autumn. Um, heading into early winter. So we'll have to keep an eye of course, on what happens with these patterns. So if you do have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see this pretty well reflected. Over the next few days, we've got decently warm upper air temperatures, of course, with those southwesterly winds. And then we see that colder air come in from the north by early next week. Still a little bit of um, uncertainty exactly how cold it does get. It all depends on how far the, that air mass does spread westwards and how far southwards as well. Then we see a bit of a response in temperatures, but there still is a lot of uncertainty with a lot of up and down. We see some going quite warm, some going quite cool, um, and a lot of uncertainty. In the longer run, more low pressure comes back in. But again, it is again very, very uncertain. We've got one really quite bizarre precipitation spike getting up to sort of 35, 40 millimetres of rain. Again, a big outlier and it probably is colliding with a potentially a, a big low pressure system. But again, we'll have to keep an eye. Again, that's 10 days away. So it's unlikely um, to come off exactly like that. But a lot of uncertainty um, and it could be chilly at times. If we do have a look at the sea level pressure, generally high pressure is in control. You can see... The next 10 days plus, we're looking at around 1,020 millibars and above, so higher pressure. Still some dips to lower pressure in the longer term, but that is expected in an ensemble runs where we do get a lot of uncertainty in the longer range. If we do have a look at Glasgow, see how that does compare, we would expect a bit more lower pressure. Um, and you can see, yes, decently high pressure to around 1450 of October, and then we do see a lot more um, sort of low pressure ensembles come in. Um, but still, it is generally... High pressure dominated, at least for the week. Um, and we'll have to see how it does compare in the longer term. If we look at the temperature at 850 GHP and precipitation, very similar to London with a lot of up and down, but a lot more precipitation because we are uh, because Glasgow, of course, and Scotland is generally going to be closer to the centre of these lows, more likely to see showers, more likely to see heavier, longer spells of rain. You can see that dip over the next few days to colder conditions then it rises up again and stays around or touch above average um and again that's pretty expected as again as i said on the western side of these highs on well, the northern and western side of these highs we're getting up warmer air from the atlantic cold air is sinking down the eastern side so for glasgow a little bit in in between um uh, so at times could see the colder air could see the warmer bar they're at and where they do collide Again, that's why we could be seeing a lot of precipitation on these ensembles, even though it's still pretty high pressure dominated. Um, as that precipitation has formed at that uh, weather front boundary, but generally it is around just or uh, sort of, or a touch above average, um, with a lot of precipitation in the long term. Quite a mixed signals, but it doesn't look like an absolute deluge at this stage, apart from of course the next couple of days. Uh, doesn't look like there's going to be any massive storms moving through, which is one positive, of course, through October. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't look particularly warm or uh, massively dry either. So if we now do have a look at the G, uh, at the sorry the, Met, uh, the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation, have a look at temperatures as well. You can see precipitation moving through at the moment. A lot of precipitation around uh, in the northwest. Convey about moisture, and that's going to continue over the next few days. Again, seeing these pulses of heavy rain move through Ireland, Northern Ireland, and parts of Scotland. Um, and as uh, we do head through, we see an even reinforcement of rain 
but it does slowly peter out as it comes up against the high, maybe spreading further south and eastwards, but eventually sort of petering away. And then as we head to sort of Monday, Tuesday, you can see the winds there northerly, and the showers are mainly out in the North Sea with that cooler air pushing in. Now, if we have a look at the max temperatures, see how that does compare. You can see today, temperatures 18, 19 degrees in many parts of England, but under the showers in the north, maybe only 20, uh, or the heavy rain in the north, only 12 or 13 degrees. By Friday afternoon, we could be seeing temperatures once again, 19 or 20 degrees in England and Wales. But again, Scotland, a good few degrees cooler under the wind um, and rain. Um, and then as we head towards Saturday, still pleasant in England um, and Wales, parts of Ireland as well, but still pretty miserable in Scotland with um, that cooler conditions. And then still, Sunday is pretty decent, but we're starting to see that cooler air coming from the north, and you can see temperatures... It's Scotland, only, only 7, 8, 9 degrees in a few spots. Then through Monday, you see temperatures are really starting to cool down. You can see that cold red coming in from the north, hanging on to maybe 14, 15 degrees in the far south, but really low teens into single digits further north. And by sort of early Tuesday morning, you can see really quite chilly air starting to spread in from the north. Many parts of North England, Scotland, really struggling into low to mid single digits. A few spots could even see... Some frosts with this as well, and we'll have to keep an eye on what happens with that in the longer term. But for now, it does look relatively dry in the south, but very wet in the northwest over the next couple of days. Beyond that, high pressure dominated. However, it does look like at times we could have some chilly northerly winds, which could give the potential of some quite cold days under the high pressure, and of course the potential for very cold nights, um, or at least cold for autumn. Um, and we could see some frosts develop as well. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.